Your brain is incredible. Inside your head, there are about 86 billion nerve cells, making around 100 trillion connections. Information is passing along these via electrical signals and hopping between cells using chemical messengers called neurotransmitters. And when you learn, you're activating these neurons and strengthening the connections between neurons in your brain, and even sometimes forming new ones. No wonder it's exhausting. As we learn more about the brain, we can use this knowledge to help us learn and study more effectively. So today, I'm going to give you my 10 top tips based on scientific research to supercharge your learning. Number one, repetition. Making new connections in your brain isn't easy. It takes time and effort. The best way to do it is to keep practicing or repeating whatever it is you're trying to learn. The more often you activate pairs of neurons together, the stronger the connection between them becomes and the more likely it is you're going to remember whatever it is you're learning in the future. It's not just about how often you practice or revise something. The spacing of your repetitions is important too. If you hear a fact just once, you'll quickly start to forget it. If you plotted a graph of forgetting against time, it looks a bit like this. But each time you revise a fact, you slow down the forgetting process by making those connections between neurons stronger. So how can you use this? Well, first of all, cramming is not the answer. It's better to space out your revision. 10 minutes a day for six days is more effective than one hour in one go. In fact, studies have shown that if you space out your learning properly, it can be twice as efficient. Ideally, you want to revise each fact just as you start to forget it. So your first revision session should be within 24 hours of the original learning. Then you can start to space them out more, maybe going back to it after three days, then a week, and carrying on like that. There are even computer programs to try and work out this spacing for you, which might be worth a try if you like revising online test yourself. The way you revise is important too. Revision doesn't have to mean rereading a textbook. A quiz can be even better. When you test yourself, you're practicing remembering stuff. Exercising those neural networks will make it easier to use them when you really need to in the exam. Testing yourself works best when you find it difficult enough to require some effort, but not too difficult. You want to be getting most, but not all of the answers right. So start with a small number of questions and when you're confident with those, start adding more. Remember, you're trying to catch that point just as forgetting starts. You also need to make sure you give yourself feedback afterwards and look up any answers that you got wrong or didn't know. Mixing the types of problem can be really helpful as well, particularly for things like mathematics because then you're working out what method you need to use, as well as just practicing using that method. Number four, teaching others. Another really good way to engage your brain and revise actively is to teach other people. If you explain a topic to someone, you have to have a really good grasp of that topic, especially if they ask you questions. And again, you're practicing using those neural networks and recalling information with them as you explain it. So rope in friends, family, even your pet, and see if you can explain the water cycle or why World War II started to them. Number five, depth of processing. Sometimes you might think you've forgotten a piece of information when actually you never stored it in the first place. To give yourself the best chance of remembering what you read or hear, you need to process it as deeply as possible to make sure it's stored securely in the brain. Studies have shown, for example, that people remember a word better if they're asked to fit it into a sentence than if they're just asked whether it contains a certain letter. Putting it in that sentence means you have to process the meaning of the word a deeper level than just looking at the letters. One way to increase your depth of processing is to look for links between the material you're reading and things you already know. Linking new topics with old ones or even something you learnt in another subject can be really helpful in making sure the information is stored securely for the future. Number six, mix it up. If you have a list to learn, try not to always study it in the same order. 
We know that you'll tend to remember the first and the last items on our list. Those in the middle are much more likely to get jumbled up or forgotten entirely. By changing the order of the information each time, you give yourself the best chance of remembering it all. Seven, triggers. Use your environment to your advantage. Lots of work has been done on context-dependent recall, which is the idea that the things around you can help or hinder your memory. Generally, people do better when they recall information in the same environment they learnt it in. That goes for whether there's background noise, what you can smell or taste, or even whether you're underwater. And it's not just external states. You tend to remember information better when you're in the same emotion as when you learnt it which might explain why getting stressed during an exam can make it impossible to remember anything you've learned. To use this, think about where you need to recall the information and whether there's something you could use as a trigger. Perhaps it's always using a particular colour of pen when revising geography, or maybe there's a nice smelling lip balm you could put on when you're learning French. It isn't going to take the place of hard work, but these little touches just might help you remember the right facts when you need them. Some of the best techniques when it comes to learning lists are in fact some of the oldest. And one of my favourites is called a memory palace or the method of loci. To use this, imagine a place you know really well, like your house, and picture yourself walking through it. At strategic points along it, imagine an object relating to the word you're trying to remember. So if I was trying to remember the elements of the periodic table, I might imagine an explosion of hydrogen in my hallway, then a floating balloon for helium tied to the door of the kitchen, then maybe a lithium ion battery on the kitchen table. The images can be as random and silly as you like, as long as the associations work for you. So maybe the element germanium makes you think of a geranium, so you could imagine a flower growing out of your toilet. What's important is you make the images as vibrant as possible and really visualise them. This technique works well because thinking of the associations increases your depth of processing, while placing them around your house or along another route you know well gives you those triggers, making sure you remember them in the right order as you imagine walking back through. This is actually the method used by most memory champions who learn the order of a whole deck of cards in very little time. Give it a go. You might be surprised how well it works. Number nine, gamification. If you're anything like me, one of the biggest problems with revision is boredom. If your mind starts wandering after 10 minutes, you're not going to be learning effectively. And so a growing trend is to gamify learning. Games are great because they usually involve some kind of reward, points, prizes, advancing to the next level. Even if these prizes are only virtual, they can be enough to activate the brain's reward circuits, driving you to keep going and keep playing the game. Have you ever been so lost in a good game, so desperate to get to the next level, that you have no idea how much time has passed? Well, if you could get that same feeling when you were learning, imagine how much more effective your revision could be. As well as making it more fun, games can be really immersive, keeping your brain active and helping it to store the information. If you want to give this a try, there are all sorts of apps and online learning games from Duolingo to Quizlet. Just find one that works for you. Or you can work out your own reward system for learning. Maybe treating yourself with 10 minutes on YouTube if you get 8 out of 10 or higher on your maths problems. The most important thing is keeping yourself engaged in what you're doing so you can form and strengthen those new connections in the brain effectively. Number 10, sleep. But probably the most important thing you can do for your memory is get enough sleep. If you're tired, your focus and attention suffers and your brain just isn't in the right state to learn. But sleep is important after you've learned as well. While you sleep, your brain sorts through all the memories it's stored during the day, processing them and moving them to long-term storage. It also fits them in with other memories and extracts the gist of the information without you consciously having to do anything. In fact, studies have shown that sleeping between two learning sessions, so having one in the evening and one the next morning, improves performance compared to having the same amount of time between the sessions but not sleeping between them. 
and this boost is still seen six months later. So there we have it, 10 top tips backed by science to help you study and learn more efficiently. Have you tried any of these already? Or do you have any other techniques that you use to help you? I'd love to hear about them, so please do leave me a message in the comments. And if you'd enjoyed these videos, please subscribe to my channel where you'll find all sorts of other videos that will tell you more about your amazing brain. Thanks for watching.